On this Wednesday's early edition at 6, in Korea there is an urgent need to stabilize the skyrocketing housing rental prices that are suffocating consumers. The government announces measures to breathe new life into the market. Korea's Consumer Sentiment Index dips for the first time in five months. But the Bank of Korea says this is largely because the people are not feeling the impact of the economic recovery in their everyday lives. And despite the improving mood on the Korean Peninsula, a U.S. Deputy Defense Secretary nominee states more provocations can be expected from Pyongyang and that Washington's North Korea policy will not change anytime soon. Stay with us for these stories and more. It is 4 a.m. in Washington, 11 a.m. in Kiev, and 6 on a Wednesday evening here in Seoul. Welcome to Early Edition at 6. I'm Kim yeon -ji. And I'm Daniel Chan. Thank you for joining us. We kick things off for the latest on South Korea's reunification policy. The government ministry in charge of matters related to reunification with North Korea supports President Park Geun-hye's plans to launch a preparatory committee with the same goal. Unification ministry spokesman Kim Yi do said Wednesday that the functions of the committee and the ministry will not overlap. Kim elaborated on the president's plan, explaining that the committee would be brainstorming for ways to unify the Korean peninsula and prepare accordingly, while coming up with ways to integrate the policies and the people of the two Koreas. President Bak announced plans to launch a preparatory committee for reunification on Tuesday in a nationally televised news conference. The two Koreas just wrapped up two rounds of reunions of families separated by the Korean War. The event was a first in three years and has helped to thaw inter-Korean relations a bit. But could it be a launching point for even better relations between the two Koreas? To evaluate the Park administration's North Korea policy in its first year, we are now joined by Dr. Pung Young-sik, Senior Research Fellow at the Asan Institute for Policy Studies. Good to have you with us again, Dr. Bong. Good Welcome evening. to the studio. So, the reunions of war-separated families are now over. The process went smoothly, although we worried that, you know, the joint military exercises between South Korea and the U.S. could endanger this uh, event. So, what now? Can we expect to see uh, inter-Korean relations to thaw a bit more? So, what now after the successful uh, completion of the family reunion? Well, I would say that uh, first, inter-Korean relations will be gradually improved, at least in the short term, and to the trust-building process. The signature North Korea policy of the administration uh, has just started. Let me give you some reasons why I think uh, these two things will happen. First, with regard to inter-Korean relations, it looks very positive because North Korea today is very different from uh, it was last year. Last year, this time, North Korea uh, wasted no time or effort to uh, launch vitriolic uh, threats to the Park Geun-hye administration. And we all remember that North Korean government canceled the family reunion event just a few days before the scheduled uh, date, arguing that uh, it should be linked uh, with the uh, resumption of Mount Kim project. But this time, North Korea does not really oppose the continuation of the uh, key resolve, the military exercise hosted by uh, Korean military and the U.S. forces in Korea. So there is a positive sign of change on the part of North Korea. With regard to trust building process, um, now Park Geun-hye government can show uh, the South Korean public that it has accomplished tangible outcomes. According to uh, Asan Institute's recent uh, public opinion surveys, in response to the question, what should be the, uh, the most important achievement to say that Park Geun-hye's North Korea policy has been successful? The number one answer was the, uh, the separate family union event. Number two was smooth operation of Kaesong Industrial Complex. Now, President Park Geun-hye can say that I checked these two biggest tasks. And now uh, she can argue to the public with confidence that the trust-building process 
has been started. Okay, the reunion event it was very great. Most of the participants were in their twilight years, and unfortunately, this could be the last reunion event for them. Uh, we were hoping it could be held more often and very soon. Is is there a possibility that this could be changed into a regular event for the two Koreas? Regret, regretfully, I should say that the chances seem to be very low because there is no uh, clear sign that North Korea's attitude uh, has been changed. South Korean government has. Uh, persistently uh, made a request uh, to the North Korean government on three things. One is to make the family reunion event as a regular event. Two, uh, help the individual effort to verify and confirm the life and death of their family members. Three, to facilitate exchange of letters and communications. And these three requests uh, were clearly reiterated by former president of South Korea, No Moo Hyun in his face-to-face -face meeting with the late uh, Kim Jong-il. But nothing has happened. And uh, there is a, a temptation on the uh, North Korean side to use this card as a bargaining chip uh, to influence South Korean government. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think um, the family reunion event uh, being regularized is really low. Um, I, I would like to give you a, a different answer. Um, considering the fact that uh, among all the remaining uh, members of the separate families, um, on average, uh, 3,800 people uh, die every year. But uh, the chances are very low. Yeah, that's quite disappointing, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but so although inter-Korean relations seems to be thawing a little bit, uh, only when North Korea takes tangible steps towards denuclearization, we know that uh, it can be truly improved, right? So uh, to bring about Pyongyang's denuclearization, uh, what does the South Korean government need to do? Park Geun-hye administration of South Korea needs to keep uh, its eyes on the ball. Uh, clearly and in a steady, fast fashion, meaning that the, for denuclearization process, the key word for South Korean government is harmony. Park Geun-hye administration needs to pursue two goals uh, at the same time. One is to move ahead with the uh, denuclearization effort, but two, uh, it needs to maintain the momentum to improve inter-Korean relations. And these two calls uh, at times can be in conflict with each other. So the goal for Park geun administration is to try to achieve these two goals without sacrificing one goal for the other. Because North Korea may try to uh, drive a wedge amongst the other five pa participant countries in six-party talks. It doesn't want to be locked in a situation that North Korea will be just one against five. So North Korea may dangle, dangle uh, in front of the Park geun administration that if you want to continue to improve inter-Korean relations, you better not push us too hard to the corner with regard to missile and nuclear issues. That could be a real challenge for Park geun administration, how to keep the right balance and harmony between these two goals. But unfortunately, we are uh, sensing some uh chances of hostility from North Korea soon because we had a patrol boat from North Korea crossing the NLL not just once, twice, but three times. And it's clearly uh, a very controlled measure by them, uh, an act of uh, minor provocation, if you might add. Do we expect something bigger in the future while the joint military drills are being conducted between U.S. and South Korea? I think not. The chances of the North Korea actually launching outright provocation is extremely, extremely low. Uh, as you said, that all these uh, 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 you know, activities were kind of very minor and uh, controlled events. The reason why I say that is that uh, there was a clear mutual understanding that inter-Korean relations should be uh, separate from the military exercise uh, between South Korea and the United States. The South Korean representatives in the high rank official meetings uh, made this point really clear to the North Korean representatives and it was reported that North Korean representatives actually accepted South Korea's position. In addition to that, North Korean leadership does not want any disruption at this point. The representatives of North Korea at the high-ranking official meetings and family reunion event emphasized that 
taking pragmatic measures to improve inter-Korean relations is a special order, took myung, direct high order from Supreme Leader himself. So why North Koreans want to try something that would upset uh, their Supreme Leaders? So I think the chances of the uh, North Korean provocations during the exercise is quite low. That's the good news. So it seems like it's in the, you know, North Korea's best interest to keep things quiet and peaceful, at least uh, for now. Uh, well, in another development, the South Korean government has shown its willingness to support North Korea for the eradication and prevention of foot and mouth disease in the country. Uh, to that end, Seoul proposed working level talks between the South and the North for that. Uh, how do you think North Korea will respond? It is too early to predict how North Korea would respond to these humanitarian gestures uh, from the South. But I'd like to emphasize that regardless of North Korea's response, South Korean government will continue to uh, enlarge and emphasize humanitarian aid toward North Korea. Because it, it is uh, in very consistent with Park Geun-hye administration's uh, trust-building process toward North Korea, which separates uh, humanitarian aid from politics. So although Park Geun-hye administration will remain to deal with any provocations from the North, resolutely and firmly, it does not oppose uh, provision of humanitarian aid that will enhance the daily life of North Korean citizens. We all remember that's the point emphasized by President herself during the cabinet meeting, that focus of unification policy should be on how to help improve the daily lives of common people inside North Korea. And as the previous segment of this uh, news program uh, reported that pa President Park Geun-hye uh, once again emphasized the importance of unification by creating the uh, preparatory committee for unification. So I think the South Korean government, regardless of North Korea's response to these gestures, will continue to encourage provision of humanitarian aid to North Korea. Clearly, there's meticulous attention to detail by President Park in relations to reunification of the two Koreas. Uh, if you were to uh, narrow it down to just her grades purely based on her North Korea policies, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much would you rate our president? Well, it seems like that I'm a, a <laughs> Korean teacher to measure everything in numbers. I would say 8 out of 10. Um, because uh, I'd like to give, uh, give a high mark uh, on Park Geun-hye administration's North Korean policy, but I also uh, have some critical comments. Uh, reg with regard to the success side, that um, I'd like to uh, give credit uh, to Park Geun-hye administration to maintain its principled position despite uh, multitude of North Korea's challenges and provocations last year. Uh, so it succeeded in weathering the storm uh, from North Korea last year. And uh, in a related point, uh, South Korean government succeeded in launching um, very effective summit diplomacy, especially with United States and China. So South Korea's strategic position between these two uh, great powers has been enlarged. On downside, um, the problem with the Park Geun-hye administration's North Korea policy is that South Korean people do not really know what it, it is. According to the uh, public opinion survey conducted by the, by the Asan Institute, one out of three South Korean citizens do not know what signature North Korea policy of the Park Geun-hye administration actually is. One out of three do not know. And amongst the people who said they know the signature foreign policy of Park Geun-hye administration is, the number one answer was not trust building process, but sales diplomacy, very reminiscent of its predecessor, Lee myung administration. So I think 2014 is a very important year for Park Geun-hye administration to actually crank up the trust-building process policy toward North Korea. This year is the uh, genuine opportunity of Park Geun-hye administration to actually realize its own North Korea policy. So I wish the government all the best.
So challenges still remain, but you still gave 8 out of 10, so that's pretty high, I would say. Well, thank you, Dr. Gong, for your in-depth analysis today. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Well, moving on to some other stories and shifting gears a little bit. The nominee to serve as the next U.S. Deputy Defense Secretary says North Korea is highly likely to launch more provocations. The clearest hint yet that Washington's new North Korea policy will remain the same for the foreseeable future. During a confirmation hearing at a Senate Armed Services Committee Tuesday, Robert Work pointed to a strong possibility of more provocations by the North as its leader Kim Jong-un looks to tighten his grip on power. Work said Kim remains in full control of the regime and is consolidating power. He added North Korea's weapons of mass destruction and the regime's proliferation activities are a direct and serious threat to the United States and its allies in the region. On Tuesday, we brought to you live coverage of President Park Geun-hye's speech to the nation, marking the one-year anniversary of her inauguration, in which she laid out her three-year economic innovation plan. As the first part of the plan, the finance ministry this Wednesday announced measures aimed at reining in household debt and boosting the nation's sagging housing market. Our Song ji Sun has the details. Balancing record-breaking exports with greater domestic activities is a key economic objective of President Park Geun-hye's three-year plan. And as the first concrete step toward boosting domestic demand, the government has put together a detailed plan to reinvigorate the housing market. Finance Minister Hyun no told a meeting of economy-related ministers on Wednesday that there is an urgent need to stabilize skyrocketing housing rent fees to allow consumers to spend more on other things. To control prices in Korea's traditional rental system called Jeonse, the government will make sure some 500,000 new homes will be built over the next three years. The government will also offer low interest loans totaling 11 trillion won or 10 billion US dollars to new home buyers to ease their burden. It will also drop tailored plans for people seeking to rent their home on a monthly basis. Wednesday's move came one day after President Park unveiled a three year plan aimed at overhauling the Korean economy into a vibrant trendsetter from a fast follower. And to rein in the household debt issue, Seoul aims to lower households' disposable income to debt ratio by 5 percentage points by 2017. The finance ministry also said it would raise household income by creating new jobs, particularly for women and young people. Song ji Sun, Arirang News. Boosting exports and increasing domestic demand, these are the two staples of the Park Geun-hye administration's drive to protect the domestic economy from external shocks. The nation's trade minister said before lawmakers on Wednesday to explain the plan. Our National Assembly correspondent Jim young gil reports. In an annual policy report to the Parliamentary Trade Committee on Wednesday, Trade Minister Yoon Sang-jik promised to support small and medium-sized companies seeking to boost their export volume. To help SMEs boost exports, we will increase the size of our trade finance program to more than 72 billion U.S. dollars this year from 69 billion last year. Yoon said the minister will aim to lift Korea's total export volume to over $600 billion this year, up from a record high of nearly $560 billion in 2013. The ministry will also seek to increase domestic demand in order to reduce the country's reliance on exports, making the Korean economy less susceptible to the ups and downs of global markets. The government also plans to reform the country's regulatory system over the next three years to remove excess red tape and bolster sluggish corporate investment. The ministry will review the current economic regulations from the ground up with the idea of removing the excess. We will also try to prevent the regulatory system from becoming overly complex. To promote trade relations, the government will seek to conclude a pending bilateral free trade agreements with China, Canada, Australia and New Zealand as soon as possible.
Lawmakers on the Trade Committee urged the government to be thorough in its assessment of what Korea has to gain and lose from the trade pacts. Implementation of the trade deals is expected to expand Korea's trade territory from 55 percent of the global market to 71 percent. Kim young gil Arirang News. Korean consumers' confidence in the economy edged down in February from the previous month amid lingering uncertainties, despite an overall improvement in economic activity. And this comes after President Park on Tuesday vowed to boost domestic demand in her three-year economic plan. Our Connie Kim has more. Korea's Consumer Sentiment Index, a gauge of consumers' overall economic outlook, living conditions and future spending, dipped for the first time in five months in February. The Bank of Korea says the index came in at 108 this month, down one point from January, when it hit an almost three-year high. It isn't all doom and gloom, however, as the reading, which is above 100, still means optimists outnumber pessimists. That said, consumers feeling less confident of the economy could raise red flags about future growth at a time when President Park is pushing to create more balance between domestic demand and exports. The president stated as much Tuesday when she laid out her three-year economic innovation plan. The Bank of Korea says February's consumer sentiment figure was largely due to consumers not being able to feel the economic recovery in their everyday lives. The sub-index measuring medical expenses and housing expenses dropped two points and one point respectively in February. In order to achieve the president's targeted economic growth of 4 percent by 2017, all eyes are fixed on whether the government has the right measures in place to boost flagging domestic demand. Connie Kim. I don't use. Ukraine's interim president Alexander Turchinov has raised concerns about separatism in the country's Russian speaking regions after formation of a unity government was delayed to Thursday. Turchinov said he would discuss the issue with law enforcement agencies and was later quoted as saying that those found guilty of separatist acts would be punished. The Ukrainian parliament, meanwhile, has voted to take ousted President Viktor Yanukovych, whose whereabouts are still unknown, to the International Criminal Court for causing the deaths of more than 100 anti-government protesters. The ICC Public Affairs Unit, however, said it did not receive a request from Ukraine and added that the ICC cannot investigate specific individuals for a state. To strengthen regulations on protecting personal information, following a massive data leak by credit card companies here in Korea last month, a new privacy protection bill is moving through the National Assembly. The bill, passed Wednesday by the Security and Public Administration Standing Committee, would require financial institutions and other public companies to use encrypted passwords to protect social security numbers. It moves next to the Judiciary Committee and then to the full assembly for a final vote. This comes after police in the city of Incheon arrested 10 people on Wednesday on charges of hacking more than 200 websites and selling the personal data of 1.7 million people. It's the last Wednesday of the month, which means it's Culture Day here in Korea. From free admissions to museums to discounted prices and musicals and movies, there's guaranteed to be something for everyone to enjoy, which is exactly what the government had in mind when it launched the initiative last month. That's right. Our cultural correspondent Park Ju-won reports. At Seoul Arts Center on Wednesday, Korea's representative performing arts venue, hundreds of people gathered for a free concert as part of the government-led monthly culture day. The concert tickets were distributed for free online, and in just three hours, all 440 tickets were booked. It really reflects a great level of interest towards the program. We once again realize there is a high demand for culture from all walks of life. So we will keep coming up with good programs to meet the demand. I came here because my sister got tickets. It is awesome that we can listen to classical music on a regular basis with commentary that makes classical music easier to understand. It was also great to meet these very talented musicians. 
It is just one of many cultural performances or exhibitions provided for free or at a discount on this culture day across the country, the second ever. The first culture day in January was considered a success, and even more cultural institutions have joined in on the government initiative this month. Last month, 883 cultural institutions participated in the Culture Day initiative. This month, more than 200 other institutions notified us about their intention to join in the Culture Day. That means more than 8,000 institutions are participating and providing more cultural benefits for the people. Discounts on movie tickets are also being offered at three major movie chains, CGB, Lotte and Megabox on Wednesday evening, while major entertainment companies like CJ, E&M and PMC Production are providing discounts of up to 50 percent to its musicals. From this month on, tickets to sporting events will also be marked down on culture days. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. And those are the stories we're following at this hour. Thank you for watching. This has been Daniel Che. And I'm Kim Yeonji. Thank you as always for being here with us. We'll see you right back here same time tomorrow.